Welcome back, my friends on YouTube. I'm Gene Del Sala, president of Audioholics. And I'm Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. Gene, how are you, man? Doing great, my friend. I'm ready to do a little top 10 list. Top 10. How about we do a top 10 do's and don'ts of audio? Well, I got a list here, guys, because I'm not going to remember all the do's and don'ts. So I'm going to warn you that I'm going to read the list, but then we're going to elaborate. Exactly. So, so for all the skeptics that think we script, yeah. there's our disclaimer. Yeah, exactly. And we don't have a teleprompter over here, kind of like telling us what to say. So. <laughs> and we're not Sarah Palin. We don't write it on our hand. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. So let's go with the first do yeah. of audio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Select your components wisely. Yes. Be wise, people. What we mean by that is, and we actually have a video on budgeting, right? Mm -hmm. We sure do. We mean don't go out and spend, you know, two thousand dollars on an AV receiver and then pair it with a uh, home theater in a box speaker or a cube speakers. Yeah, exactly. Don't blow your budget in just one thing. You know, you don't want to go ahead and do that. Don't go and put all your money into, you know, your TV, your projector, and then just buy a mediocre home theater in a box system. Mm -hmm. So. And I think I will elaborate on uh, the video that I'm going to go ahead and link up over here, you know, on budgeting because we really went deep into the subject. But I think it's important that you have a budget for your home theater and then based on our, um, on our instructions on the video, go ahead and see how you allocate that budget to different items in your home theater and that way you'll have a really good home theater as opposed to just one great component and then everything else is out of the box as you said. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm biased more towards getting the best speakers you can, followed by, you know, getting the biggest TV you can, and then you'll worry about the electronics and the room acoustics. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't spend $10,000 on a cable, please. <laughs> With a battery on it. <laughs> With a battery. That's a big don't. And in fact, I think you just, you went ahead of yourself. Oh, sorry for that. And that's one of the don'ts. Don't overspend on one component, and that's especially cables mm -hmm. because cables have the biggest profit margins and the biggest snake oil around them notorious when i looked at amazon and i saw the price of some of these cables i blew it blew my head i couldn't even comprehend it so anyways let's not go ahead and kill the cables right now because okay. this could turn into a 50 minute video just in cables agreed so, so the next on our do list is read the manufacturing specs carefully and you could look at the video we just did on that topic mm-hmm Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the antithesis of that would be don't blindly believe the specs because specs can be highly manipulated. Yeah, as you will see in the video, specs can be manipulated in multiple ways. So just just be careful. You know, we're not saying everybody's out there manipulating stuff, um, but definitely, you know, have a very critical eye and a critical mind and, you know, take a look at the specs, make sure that they're what they're exactly what the, the manufacturer is trying to sell you. It's difficult to do apples to apples comparisons between manufacturers because there's really no set standards on how they measure loudspeakers, amplifiers, anything. So anything goes, my friends. Absolutely, yeah. But that's why we're here, Gene. We try to go ahead and make apple to apple comparisons for people. So definitely visit our website, see what we have over there. Maybe we have information in the product that you're looking for. Exactly, excellent point. So let's go to the next one. Plan your listening space. Mm. And what I mean by plan it is, first of all, figure out what room is best to put your home theater. Obviously, you don't want to put it in a kitchen. Yeah. And if you have a concrete floor. <laughs> or tile. I mean, if you have tile, you got to do something about it. you got to put some throw rugs, padded throw rugs. you got to kill some of those reflections because you don't want too many reflections. Exactly. You also want a room that's light controlled if you're going to put a projector. Absolutely, yeah. Okay? So mm -hmm. plan your listening space. Plan out where you're going to put the equipment make sure you have the pre-wires done correctly. In fact, we have a uh, video on pre-wiring mm -hmm. that you guys can check and search on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you know where everything's gonna go. Make sure you have enough space. Don't buy six foot speakers if you're putting it in a 12 by 12 room. Yep. Otherwise the speakers are gonna be right on top of each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've seen rooms where you have just like every single wall. Have you seen this? Like a wall full of speakers. Oh yes. Or somebody in the front just goes ahead and just puts like a whole Tetris of speakers together. Oh, we've seen it all. Yeah, yeah we've, we've seen some interesting stuff. Or they try bouncing speakers off of a fish tank. Ah, let's not go there today. <laughs> I'm oh, always gonna bring that up here. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next one, Dave? Right. What, what do we have? Don't haphazardly place your speakers anywhere. And this is kind of what we said before. I went, my daughter has a friend that's like this 
multi-millionaire. Okay? Mm -hmm. I went to her house. It was the most amazing house I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. They had a separate house just for a gaming room, right? <laughs> like, oh my it. God, I want to be partying with these girls. <laughs> so I asked them, I go, you, you know, the only thing you guys are missing is a home theater room. And like, no, we have one. And, you know, the curious guy I am, I'm like, I want to see what their definition of a home theater room is, right? Mm -hmm. So she takes me to the home theater room, and it's a beautiful room. You know, it's, it's not that big. It's a medium-sized room, but it's beautifully done. They have a riser with the seats. The seats are beautiful. There's a big screen. And then I look. They have one tower speaker on the floor for the left channel. The right channel tower speaker was on some type of a, of a like table, mm -hmm. like about six feet above it. The center channel was on the floor, not even elevated up. Right. It was just completely on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then they just had surround speakers placed all over the, the back with no rhyme or reason. They weren't even like level matched or nothing. So I look at this and, I'm, and they're like, what do you think? I'm like, well, I go, it's a nice room. And I, you know, I was trying to be nice about it. I never met these people before, but honestly, you should work on Speaker placement. Speaker placement. Right. And again, in the description, I'll go ahead and put our video on speaker placement because it's very important. And you know what, Gene? I want to make a little pause over here, and I want to make sure that we tell our people we're not we're not laughing about the mistakes of others. No, okay? absolutely. Um, here, what we do is that we we try to educate. Hey, you know what? When I was a teenager, here here's the deal. I was all into audio, okay, and I had check this out. I had two out of the box. <laughs> uh, speaker sets, okay? Uh -huh. And then I will go ahead and put you, remember those radios that had a cassette and then they just had like one speaker? Yeah. Okay, I will put like some of those as well. And I had all these plethora of speakers in this one wall, okay? And then I will use the equalizer to go ahead and make oh, everything. Oh, you make the V. <laughs> make the V. Yeah. That was my speaker setup back in the days, and I thought I was a man, and I thought I had it all figured out. And you hear, you 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 will hear the boom like so loud. I thought that was it. Yeah. Okay, I had the best system on the planet. Not really. I just didn't have any education on the subject matter. That's all. Um, that that's can, that can to make do. or break your system. You guys mm -hmm. put all this money into a system, and then you know to just not properly set it up is a crime, in my opinion. Exactly. It's like having a big gym to work out with you go, and then you do you know the pro improper form or improper exercises for your muscles. Perfect analogy. I could have said it better. So what's next on our list? Let's see. Here's you know this kind of um, this kind of relates to what we said before about selecting your components wisely. Research. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the problem. It's difficult to research. When I research a re a buying a new refrigerator, for example, all I find is a is just a boatload of links on the web that just go nothing to sales pages to Amazon. Okay, mm -hmm. no product information, just manufacturer specs. It's, it pisses me off. And sometimes you get rose-colored reviews. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which are basically nothing else than you know. Glorified press releases. Thank you. you took we'll do a video about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good topic. But so, but yeah. the thing is, with audio and, and particularly on our site, we get very detailed on the products. So if you want to buy a new speaker. See if it's a review on our site because we're going to take the thing apart. We're going to measure it. We're going to analyze it. We're going to tell you the pros. We're going to tell you the cons. It's not going to be all rosy, okay? Some people might get hurt feelioma if we say some constructively negative things. But you know what? I wish there were websites like that for refrigerators, dishwashers, appliances. You know, cars are a little bit better. But a lot of things I go to buy, commodities, there's no information. Exactly. But there's information for audio guys, so please research before you buy. Don't just buy blindly. So that's a don't. Don't buy blindly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Consult with experts and experienced home theater experts. You know, you've got access on our site. You've got access to regular forum members that are mm -hmm. contributing on our site and some manufacturers too, some mm -hmm. real industry and installers. And sometimes if you get really lucky, and if this happens, you may, you may as well play the lottery that day. Sometimes we have Dr. Floyd Tool that goes ahead and even posts in our forum. He does. He won't give you product recommendations, but he'll tell you the science. Box. Yeah, he'll explain the science behind things that you may not understand, and he'll tell you exactly what's going on. So we have a lot of good people. He explains things that I don't always understand. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. can I both? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, guys, we have experts on our site. We have mm -hmm. experts on our forum. We have experts on our, sometimes on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the guys on our YouTube channel are pretty smart buckaroos. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, definitely. Um, for the don't, 
opposite of this. Don't blindly believe salesmen, okay? Because the salesmen just want to do one thing. They want to sell you the product. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get in trouble, especially with the cables, because they believe they own Kool-Aid that they drink. Exactly. And so, and the other thing too, you know, and I'm not trying to put the salesman from like some of the brick and mortar stores down, but you know, see if the salesman really and truly has like a technical background or something, yeah. you know, because a lot of these guys, unfortunately, they're regurgitating whatever they were told. And, and realize like when you go to a store like Best Buy, they have very turn, quick turnarounds on their employees. Mm -hmm. So they're not very well trained, all of them. Mm -hmm. Now, you're right, there are some really good salesmen out there that I've met at some of the higher end stores and they will give you good advice and they will, they will passionately follow, lead you to the products that they believe sound good because they like them too. So again, weigh the research and weigh, you know, weigh the expert opinion you get on the websites and the magazines and then what the salespeople tell you as well and you know, form your own opinion. If, if you don't learn anything else from this video, learn this, have a critical mind question everything, not to the point that you're questioning things that shouldn't be questioned, but, you know, have a critical mind, don't take things at, at face value. Exactly. So, let's see, take your time to set up and calibrate your system. Very important, I think. Again, I've been to so many people's homes where they've got this beautiful setup, they've got the speakers in the right locations, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, oh, this is, looks promising. I go to turn it on, and I don't hear a center channel. And I find out that they wired the center channel to the intercom system in their kitchen. That's a true story. Mm -hmm. I've found center channels wired in the kitchen. Okay? It happens. So make sure this stuff is set up right. Make sure you calibrate. You know, use your SPL meter. Don't just rely. At, at the very worst, use the auto EQ with the microphone at the sweet spot. So at least you get your channel levels, delays, and 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 distances, all that stuff correct. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. You could go in after you do the auto EQ and fix the base management settings and turn off the parametric EQ or whatever they're using for equalization and just rely on the calibrated results for level and delay. You know what, Dean? I think we have so much good points that we have covered in this video that in the description below, I'm going to link every single supplementary video that can go ahead and help our people over here because maybe they're hearing well I don't know how to do that well we have a video on that right so and, and you know to the opposite of that don't just assume plug and play works don't assume you hit the red button and everything's great unfortunately it doesn't that only work works that in way. Star Trek yes <laughs> and it only works towards the last five minutes of the episode absolutely yes it has to be like right at the end right at the edge you know <laughs> so yeah unfortunately things don't work that way yeah it's never that easy guys mm -hmm. so Here's for more of an advanced um, tip. Measure, analyze, and adjust. Mm -hmm. And we have a video on that for dealing with multiple subs and EQ. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you're really serious about audio and you have the time, you could download a free software called REW. Okay, it's a great acoustical software, very small learning curve on it. You could buy a mic for as little as 100 bucks with its own separate uh, DSP in it, or DAC in it, so you don't have to use a sound card in your own computer. And you're on your way. You can start making measurements in the listening areas. You can calibrate your system much more precisely than just using an SPL meter, and especially when you're adjusting bass levels. Yeah, you don't have a mother-in-law seat anymore, that's for sure. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, even if you get the measurements good, here's another tip. Use your ears. Listen with your ears, because even if the measurements can be good, it doesn't always mean it's going to sound good. Okay, so there's, because you may not account for everything. I always listen with my ears after I get the measurements right. Yeah, in this case, the proof is in the ear, guys. Okay, that's really and truly the bottom line. I mean, that's what you're doing all this work for. Um, so if it measures good, but it doesn't sound good, I think it's time to go back and uh, troubleshoot your system a little bit more. And you know, for the opposite of that, we already discussed it basically. We're kind of merging these do's and don'ts together. Don't listen with the measurements alone. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of common sense when we say listen with your ears, don't just listen with your microphone. It's funny, we know people that actually listen with the measurements. Oh yeah. <laughs> microphone doesn't hear like your ears do. Okay? No. Your mi microphones are really stupid compared to your brain. Uh, yeah, there's no comparison. I just use the measurements as a comparative purpose to make sure I'm in the right area. I make sure I can get rid of the suck outs or the major problems that sometimes are not always audible. You mm -hmm. know, on a high Q bump or a high Q dip, you might see it in a graph, but it's not going to be audible to your ears. Yeah, so be practical. You know, again, the, the, the proof is in the ear. Exactly. Know? 
So let's see, create an environment for multi-listener. Again, this is that thing where, you know, back in the day when we only had two channel, everybody would set up their system, and then they'd say, you have to sit right here. Like the sweet spot. Right here, the sweet spot. You gotta go right there. The sweet spot is there. Right here, and you got the perfect sound, <laughs> okay? We're, I hope we've moved beyond that now, guys. Seriously, I mean, you have friends, you have a girlfriend, you have cousins, nephews, the mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Set up an environment that multiple people can enjoy, not just yourself. And how do you do that? You do that with multi-sub and EQ. You do that with proper speaker placement. You do that with positional EQ, meaning you put the seats in the right locations to get the best sound. Very important. Yeah. Measure for every seat. Make sure every single seat is a pleasurable one. And that's something that now you have totally perfected over here for 10 years or more. Yeah. You actually were searching for your holy grail, trying to make every seat as good. And I got to give some love out to THX because they're the ones that used to drill that home in their trainings years ago, decades ago. Every seat should be a good seat. That's all I ever heard about from THX. And you know, years later, they're 100% on the money. It's mm -hmm. so true. Totally. So let's see what the opposite of that is. Let's see. Well, we already said that. Don't create a single sweet spot. Okay, here's the most important one, guys. I've, this is a big pet peeve of mine because you and I both worked. We, we both worked in defense. Mm -hmm. We both yeah. worked in telecom. Yeah. The thing I hated, the thing you should not do, is keep this all IP. Oh, yeah, totally. This is not Roswell technology. It's not. Don't go ahead and think that you know this. You, that you hold a patent on this kind of knowledge. Okay, share it with others. Share it. You have a big community on our forum, our Facebook, our YouTube. Why not help others? Path of audio enlightenment. Absolutely. I mean, this is a hobby, and you know, there's no reason why people shouldn't be helping others. If you have great knowledge on the subject matter, help a friend who's getting started and who's putting the speakers all over the place because he just doesn't know better. You know? In fact, if you, are, if you are so inclined and you really are an expert, you know, send us an email because we're always looking for people to do writing for mm -hmm. the site. We're looking for contributions. If we haven't covered a topic that's, that's baffling you, let us know or help us cover that topic. Exactly. Definitely get involved. Let's go ahead and create an awesome audio community over here. That's what it's all about, you know, sharing. Exactly. And that's the power of the internet and social media is that we can all act as an audio community together. And then all the little squabbles on the side of this speaker is better than that speaker, it's immaterial. It's corporeal. Absolutely. I, I couldn't have said it better, Gene. I couldn't have said it better. Let's go ahead and unite, you know. There's, there's power in numbers, Gene. There is. So. Absolutely. Let's be powerful. You know, so with that said, I think, uh, you know, like, like he said, if you're an expert, either send an email or even comment below. If it's easier for you to comment below, that's fine. We'll go ahead and contact you. No I want to hear, I want to hear from installers and just guys. I love hearing from guys that have been in the industry for like three decades. Yeah. We have, we have a couple of guys like that writing on our site and their knowledge is just invaluable. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of those guys, please comment, get in touch with us. We want you. Absolutely. So with that said, you know, click like on the button below if you like this video, share it with your friends, comment, and until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.